Hey, it's Ernest from Trip Astute. In this video, we're covering how to add stopovers to your flight so you can explore more places on your trip for less money. About six years ago, I went to a family wedding outside of Paris. I decided I also wanted to explore a few other places in Europe, so I booked some local flights from Paris to Berlin, from Berlin to Naples, and then from Naples back to Paris. Had I been a bit smarter about my planning, I probably would have avoided booking four different flights and tried to maximize a single booking. Many times when we travel abroad, we base the amount of places that we want to see on money rather than time. I know I've done this many times, especially in Europe. I think about jumping to several different countries, but due to the cost, I usually end up going to only one or two locations. However, there is a little trick that a lot of folks in the travel community use. It's called the 2359 rule, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Before we jump in, if you're new here, I want to welcome you to our channel. Trip Astute is a travel channel that is focused on sharing ways to make travel easier, affordable, and more enjoyable. Traveling can be stressful and expensive, so we're looking for ways to help you maximize your experience through travel tips, points and miles, and innovative gear. So the word connection or stopover often has a negative connotation. People often associate them with long periods of waiting at the airport for their next flight. In fact, I know that I often will pick non-stop flights since I don't want to have to deal with the hassle of changing aircrafts. However, any connecting flight that's under 24 hours counts as a connection. Anything above 24 hours is a stopover, which usually results in an extra charge. The concept is to incorporate connections that are just under 24 hours, so they feel like stopovers, but they're technically connections. This is known as the 2359 rule. For example, suppose you fly from Los Angeles to Bangkok, but you stop in Taiwan. If you were to time your arrival around midday, you could technically have the rest of the day and one night to explore the area. You could either put your belongings in the locker or even check into a hotel for the night. Some people will even try to land early in the morning so they can explore during the day and just come back to the airport for a nighttime flight. That way they can even avoid paying for a hotel. What's even cooler is that even though 24 hours is the general limit for what counts as a stopover, there are several airlines that actually allow and often promote longer stopovers. For North American stopovers, check out Air Canada's stopover policy for return flights. For Europe, check out Finnair, Iceland Air, Wow Air, and Tap Portugal. For Asia, check out Air China, China Southern Air, Singapore Airlines, Thai Airways, and Turkish Airways. For Africa and the Middle East, Check out Ethiopian Airlines, Emirates, Etihad, Qatar Airways, and Virgin Australia. I put Virgin Australia in this group since a lot of their flights stop in the Middle East. We traveled to Lisbon during the winter holiday, and if we had more time, we would have loved to take an advantage of TAP Portugal's overnight layover policy and offer. It would have been a great way to see other cities in Portugal like Porto. There are a few ways to book a trip like this, but honestly, it can require a bit of research. Most times you would search for a flight on a site like Google Flights or Skyscanner, then see if there's a common stop location. For example, if we look at the Los Angeles to Bangkok trip, there are several flights that stop in either Beijing or Taipei. Since it looks like the Air China flights stop in Beijing, let's then create a multi-city flight that gives me a day or two to explore Beijing. In this example, for less money than the original flight that I found, I can now leave Los Angeles before noon on a Wednesday, land in Beijing mid-afternoon on Thursday, and then fly to Bangkok on Friday evening. This would give me a little over a day to explore the city. I could also add another day to the itinerary, and it wouldn't cost me anything extra. That way, I would have two full days to explore Beijing before heading off to Thailand. Still, there is a better way to search for these flights. You can use a tool designed for this exact purpose. A popular one in the travel community is Air Wander. Air Wander basically does a lot of the heavy lifting for you in finding flights and destinations based on stopover locations and length of time. It even has a special interface that will tell you where you can stop over and for how much more than the original direct flight. In this example, I'll choose Ho Chi Minh City since it's one of the recommended stopover locations. I also happen to love Ho Chi Minh City since I went there in 2016 and it was an amazing experience. Though it takes a while for it to search and load the results, you can see that it does all the research for you. It even lets you specify how long you want to stay at your connection for each individual leg of your trip, which makes it so much easier when trying to design a flight plan with stopovers. For example, you may want a long connection 
when you're traveling to your destination, but maybe on the way home, you want a quick connection or direct flight. This tool allows you to search with this criteria in mind. And just in case you're wondering, I did the same search for a stopover in Beijing and it found the same flight plan that I was able to create on Skyscanner. Finally, here are a couple tips to keep in mind when booking flights with long connections or stopovers. Number one, check visa requirements. If you're planning to explore a new city during your stopover, make sure you have a valid visa for that country. Most times you'll get flagged at the airport if you don't have a visa for your final destination, but stopovers can often get overlooked. Make sure you do some research ahead of time on whether you need one. If you need more info on how to get a travel visa, check out our video on the topic. Number two, use airport lockers. If you're planning to leave the airport but going to return later on, consider using an airport locker. Most airports have them or offer some kind of similar luggage hold service. Also, some airlines will let you check in a bag 24 hours in advance, which is another option if a locker isn't available. Ironically, LAX, which is the closest international airport to me, doesn't have a luggage locker system. Instead, they have a company called LAX Luggage Storage, which will hold your bag. Number three, point redemptions can be limited and difficult. When booking flights with longer stopovers, it can be a challenge to book them using points, even if they are an official travel partner to your points program. If you're determined to use points, I would call your points program to see if you can book over the phone if you can't find the same or similar flight plan. For example, Chase lists a 24 hour support line if you need help booking using their travel portal. Number four, know your limits. Coming off a long flight and spending an entire day touring a city, then jumping onto another flight can be really tough on the body, especially if you're not able to rest on the plane. I know I'm someone who often struggles with red eye flights, so just remember not to extend yourself. The last thing you wanna do is push your body too hard and get sick during your trip. And if you need suggestions on how to rest on the flight, check out our video on the topic. Have you used the 2359 rule or even booked an extended stopover during your travels? If so, let us know how you did it and if you have any tips on the process. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give us a thumbs up and consider sharing our videos with others who might benefit from our content. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.